here we go. This is Flash at the Dork Table on Saturday, the 17th of November, 2001 and 8. And we're going to say hi to the folks over at the RLM chat where I usually hang out when I play on the internet. And we got Barman, Grimner, Moose Girl, Miss Kate, Asmo, Chel, Sidoni, Circle, she's out with the dog walking right now. Uh, Chloe, D underscore C, Echelon, me. I be Don C, Jew Dread, Pox Fide, Pox Phone, Pone Sauce, Rain, RLM Fluke, Rob Works, Rooms, The Phantom, A hey, Beetle, Colfax 101, Cyborg Noodle, Dakota, Frumpy, Frumpy 3, Gromit, losing my list here. Java Doctor 2, J's, 9's, J's, Kozu, and Skittle, the bot. Pretty sure Skittle's a bot. Anyway. So, we're coming up on a another end of another year. What's this, November, late, no, mid-November. So we got a few weeks left before all the real uh, holiday stupidity really gets underway and all the people become a pain in the ass and Everybody's got to get this and get that and hurry, 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 hurry because they don't want to make their kids pissed off because they didn't get them a new game or whatever the new thing is these days. Anyway, so I was listening to a fellow over at BitChute, or maybe it was um, YouTube. Yeah, the guy that un that that disclosed the moonwalk and goes through plenty of time and explanation on showing you how bad it is. Well, he did another one the, uh, recently. I don't know how recent it was, but I watched it recently. And he did about our anarchism. And he had it pretty much about being in a group. It just goes from being against state and not wanting other people to rule your life to jumping into a another group and then having a different set of rules to run your life. And I don't think that's 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 how hollywood does it and how they project it what i see is way different because me and cirque live under the same roof and we both participate in the political arena at the same level you know we don't we watch it spin and we see what it does we listen to all the promises they make and watch all the crap they really do and hope it goes away but it doesn't. So I think we're anarchist minded. You know, you don't have to, you don't have to, um, there's no way to live outside of this box that they call life. So not, not without being, what would you call it? Uncomfortable, you know, living outside and I don't know, riding a bicycle for energy or whatever the hell you could come up with off the grid alone isn't the same as what you can do in a society full of even the worst of shit. Yeah, I know, Grim, the, the moon walk, but there are people. Anyway, the reason I brought it up, this guy really did, did a really good job of disclaiming or disproving the moonwalk or, you know, moon landing, flying to the moon and the simplest of answers and he didn't have to go very far out on a limb to make his points but when he did the inter you know he, when he did the link about uh, anarchy nah that it, it, then he just turned back into the uh the opposite of the guy that was uh explaining what the moonwalk thing was really all about the moon landing and you know going into outer space what that stuff's really all about it ain't what we're told. We we all seem to know that. Or you either that or you believe that the United States went to the moon and oh, they, <laughs> they, they lost the technology. <laughs> I don't know. How do you lose technology to, to travel to the moon? Hmm. Well, I guess if you left it up to the U.S. government, they could do about it. They could lose anything that they need. <laughs> <laughs> now nah, they're pretty competent they have 320 million people 
running and fetching and carrying and doing as they're fucking told 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And people in other countries that really don't owe them any allegiance, but they guess they like the paychecks. Hmm. Mr. Grimner's the only one commenting about my moonwalk extravaganza. And uh, I don't know. You guys want to argue with him on that? Eh, go to Starbucks. You don't have a shift at Starbucks. At, <laughs> never mind. Anyway, yeah, we were bantering with my arch enemy on the real liberty media dot chat dot com chat. I always fucked that up. And uh, that was ah, the same old stuff. He needs to write some new material. But what started it off today was I posted up a thing about. Well, everybody's got this thing about, oh, we have a hundred guns to every person. Okay. Then I look back in history, and I remember when that um, fake FBI crap um, sting thing with the FBI bombing in Boston was going on. And the military, in tanks, armed to the nipples, and you name it, went door to door looking for a particular fellow or groups of fellows and far as I was concerned, that broke the Fourth Amendment. You have right from uh, unreasonable search and seizure. Well, they're looking for a bad guy. Well, so? What's that guy? Go write it down. Get a get a warrant. Come here in my house and, and we'll talk. But that's not how things really work, you know. People have, there's two lives. There's the one we read about and there's the one that we actually live. And they're not the same life, apparently. Hmm. But I really find it hard to believe that all these guns make any fucking difference. I mean, if, if you got them, you're not protecting yourself from anything. Because that's not the kind of news that I read about, for one. You know, uh, armed home person saves their self and family because they shot 12 people trying to break in their house no we don't hear any of that what we hear is school shootings and uh, all kinds of crap that they even went as far as to to fake one at a synagogue full of 90 year old jews like anybody cares enough to shoot them you know go to a jew baby factory and start at the bottom people just do everything backwards i don't i don't really understand this anymore it seems to me that if we just weren't dealing on bullshit stories that are always proven in the long run to be a bunch of crap, maybe we wouldn't be in the position we're in socially in the first place. Eh, they're talking about the kilogram has officially been redefined. How do you redefine a kilogram? What? Oh, I, I might have to do a little reading on this one. Hold on. We have an incoming dork alert. The kilogram, I think I'll read this. Says the kilogram has officially been redefined. You're going to redefine a gauge of measurement. Okay. Today, scientists voted, oh, they voted to change the definition of the kilogram as well as three other units of measurement. The ampere, the kelvin, and the mole. The vote took place at the General Confer Conference on Weights and Measures in Versailles, France. And the new definitions will be based on what we call the fundamental constants of nature. As Estefania de Mirandes of the International Bureau of Weights and Measures told Science News. Instead of the less precise definitions these measurements are currently tied to, the kilogram, for example, is defined by a physical cylinder known as Le Grand K that's stored in a vault outside of Paris. What the hell did that mean? These redefinitions have been in the works for some time. This is the most important decision that the BIPM has made in maybe a hundred years, maybe, which may be a slight exaggeration, but at least since 1960, when they adopted the international system of units. Terry Quinn, Emer Emeritus Director of the BIPM, told Engage It last year. And while the changes won't necessarily be reflected in your day-to-day -day life, they'll help scientists make more accurate measurements, go measurements going forward. Wow, what a bunch of con men. The kilogram will now be defined by the 
Planck constant, while the ampere Kelvin and mole will be tied to the elementary electrical charge, <laughs> the Boltzmann constant, and the Avogadro constant, respectively. It's about as excited as you're going to see meteorologists get. David Newell, a researcher at the National Institute of Standards and Technology, told Science News, I can't believe we're finally getting it done. Well, there we go. Now, see, now legal is just going into science, and they're, they're coming out, and they're doing, they're doing it right in front of you. They're changing definition of, of, of standard weight of measurement, you know, measurement of weight, say it backwards. And sort of, that's the foundation of why I say this is all bullshit. If, you know, they've been arguing about it for 100 years or not isn't even interesting to me. What, what gets me is that a group of these butt nuggets can sit down and vote something out of existence. And the educated butt nuggets that follow along and pay the money to go sit in the special robes <sighs> don't question any fucking thing. Like, why are they changing a definition in the first place? What is the point of that? I guess it's easier to con people when they don't have anything to refer back to. You know, so I, I don't do anything in Danish because I know English. You can't fuck me in English. You might be able to fuck me around in Danish because I don't hear and speak enough of it to uh, hold a real con conversation. But in English, I don't care how smart you are in Danish. You ain't going to get me. <laughs> yeah, fuck those scientists right in the ear. But Grim, what? see, that's the part that just gets my goat is because somebody claims they have a title blah 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 and just because they claim there's a 90 other titled people that agree with them they're going to make a change that's going to affect something that average joe it said so in the thing well this won't affect your daily life which tells me right there this is going to have an incredible effect on your daily life if you live by weights and measurements and some of us do if you smoke the marijuana, the devil's lettuce, Mary Jane, then you know that we've been dealing in grams for many years. Well, Rob Works says it's a serious. So, oh. Hmm. oh, they got some serious situation or occurrence that happens unexpectedly and demands immediate attention. That's called serious. Well, the dork table's not necessarily serious. It's more like, ah, uh, you guys see it all like this, and then you guys over there, you see it all like that. And then there's this other group of people that they don't even agree on how they see it. They just don't see what everybody else does. And uh, I don't like groups. Never been a group joiner, but it's more like a, a mental group. There's no aptitude test. There's no registration no secret handshake. You don't got to wear a red fucking hat and beat people up to prove that you're an anarchist. In fact, I think anarchists more or less don't say much about being an anarchist. They just are anarchists. They live in an anarchist fashion. And the anarchist fashion would be to uh, avoid or disclose the truth about a, a sitting entity and their own opinion the way they see it and not hold back you know the truth so we could protect the little kids because i think that we're doing a pretty good job of fucking those little kids up without all the extra help of education and religion and what else is out there doing it to them politics well, they tied it all together. Politics and, and education are now hand in hand because the state has all the rights to your kids and you don't. Let's see what they're saying. On the, Fuck those scientists, says Grimner. Oh, wow. Those are probably the same asshats that said Pluto is suddenly no longer a planet. Well, that's what I mean is who who are they? You know, I read it in a journal and it was written in this language and by these people backed it up. And so what? I saw a thing they called the moon landing on television with my own four eyes when I was like 10 years old. Well, not before, just before I turned 10. Hmm. 
Now, according to what I saw, and according to what I've read, and according to what other people have said, that never happened. That was just uh, like banking. It was creative accounting, you know, and, and the system that we live in, there's something magical about seeing something on the idiot box. If you see something on TV, especially back in those days when TV was, it wasn't the uh, thing it is now. It was brand, It was not brand new, but it wasn't affordable to everyone. There were still, people had to have a job and shit like that to be able to afford a television set. Or they could stand out in front of the street, you know, in the store and watch it on the sidewalk sometimes. <clears throat> ha ha ha. But... I was stalling while I was stoking my pipe, because I don't care, it's 420 here. Anyway, uh, let's go with, uh, we all know what we saw, okay? Or maybe some of us didn't see it, or maybe we've seen films of it, whatever the hell it is. But seeing it live on TV, does uh, it's not the information that, that's important, it's the delivery of the information. Now, Rob Works and Larry Woods, them guys go into frequency and vibration, and they have a better understanding of it. Yeah, that's me, four eyes, man. I've been wearing glasses since I was old enough to walk because uh, I kept walking into shit. So they said, hey, what's wrong with this kid? He doesn't seem to know where he's going. Anyway, so they found out I just had bad eyesight and corrected it with some eyeglasses. And uh, I've got an aversion to contact, so I won't stick shit in my eyeballs. But that's for a whole nother show. But anyway, yeah, the, between the the fake shit that we've seen in the last, I don't know, I, my, I'm 59, so my last 59 years has just been one bullshit story after the other. And this bullshit story leads to the next bullshit story that leads to the next and on and on and on. And, in, and nobody ever corrects anything. You know, n there's never a, an honest, well, we lied, comes out of nobody. They kill us. They poison the water. They, 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 it, 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 it. And still, here we are all these years later doing the same thing the same way and talking about the future like, well, oh, things are so wonderful because in time we'll be able to go to the moon, go to Mars, blah, blah, blah. But not a fucking thing about, hey... Let's decriminalize hemp and start using it in everything that we do. I mean, I've been on mines for a while now, and there's there's a, a few more than a few people over there that more than understand cannabis is not only for recreational fucking use. That that's side that's a byproduct. And I think the hype from the T V and news and movies and all that shit's gotten more people uh, I guess uh, willing to do something that they normally wouldn't do because it's now okay you know if it wasn't okay they still wouldn't do it but the ones that would do it regardless those are the people that that know what I know that Grim knows that Rob knows that other people don't know and I use Grim and Rob on a lot as a reference because uh, well I have this aversion to uh, authority. I have an aversion to government. I even have an aversion to telling people what time it is. But I don't, you know, I don't take it to that level. But it's still, if people want me to do something for them, I don't know. Why can't you just do that for yourself? <laughs> I mean, how important is it to ask somebody what time is it is anyway? Wh who are you that if you're not at from point A to point B at this certain fucking particular time, the world ends? What what's going to happen? Uh, the moon's going to crash into us. Who you know what what what? Of course, nothing ever happens, and. We're also self-important. We got our schedules and our, our meetings and our appointments and our duties and all this other shit. This man-made crap that in the end, when you're old like me, you look back and realize that it was just to distract you long enough from ever finding out 
that we live in a fucking mess that was designed to be a fucking mess. <laughs> this, none of this is by chance. None of it's on accident. Rockefeller medicine to fractional reserve banking. The federal fucking reserve. I don't know. Where do you start? If In an anarchist world, how do you put it? I think that the number one thing in my life with that mindset is to not do anybody harm, you know, period. And what I consider harm is um, theft and physical violence. What you say, that's on them. The person listening, they may agree with you, they may not agree with you, but it's not the person talking that matters, it's the one listening. Just as I thoroughly enjoyed this guy's link about explaining how they pulled off the uh, the moon flight and the moon landing and all the flaws there were in it and how easy it was to detect and this, that, and the other. And the proof is in the pudding. If you blow up a few pictures, it just shows you that this can't be possible. And what they did say they did, they never did it. It couldn't have been done at the time with the technology available, on and on and on. Then it's anarchy, and anarchists are all of a sudden, we're in some kind of group, and uh, we uh, we have meetings, and, you know, they look at it as a replacement to uh, stated government. I look at it as, if there were just rules to follow, like in your daily life, where, you know, you have your common sense about you, and you get out of your house and into your, either your vehicle or like me, you walk somewhere and you go and do your little, your little interactions in the, in the commerce world. Uh, you don't need to take rules with you because you just behave like a normal human fucking being, whatever the hell that really is. Uh, some people don't like that, but there is a standard of living that's just common amongst peaceful people that don't want you know, that outside nonsense, that crime and violence shit. Fuck all that. Leave me alone, Mr. Violence. I don't need you. <laughs> I've got some peace and quiet to, to live and to, <laughs> to do today. Anyway, so I guess uh, the way it's been portrayed through television over the last, good Lord, how many years has it been? Anybody know? I saw a movie a few years back called The Purge. Most disgusting, nonsensical piece of shit film. Uh, the way the system explains it to us is uh, anarchy is this just letting people loose on each other in some kind of violent, psychotic frenzy. It looked like a, like a, a political, uh, what do you call it, when they get together and they have a, a meeting, not a meeting, gathering, what the fuck do they call those things? Oh, crap. I can't remember, but it's not like a protest, but like if you pay to go see Trump or however they do that, you gather 100,000 people, go to see Trump. Well, it's odd to me that when you have that many people together, nobody says, well, yeah, the government lied about pot for 80 years so that we could do all this other crap. And we're sorry, but this is... No! What we found in the laboratory after all these years of being mistaken. <laughs> and here we are going, hey, but they made pot legal in Michigan, but they made pot legal in this state, but, you know, but not Texas. And what did oh, I crying out loud? The non-aggression principle isn't a verbal thing. And people overreact to words, Rob. Huge. Good God. Talk about. Don't start no shit. There won't be no shit. That's what I'm. I'm living it. You know, today, Saturday. If uh, Cirque ever wants something from the yarn store, that's her favorite thing lately. The past couple months, she's been really liking to knit stuff. And uh, today, she wanted to send me on a mission to go get something. And, and so she makes me out a nice little list and. I get to the place, and I just ha ask the woman that works there now. I know her. Can I just give you the list? And she grabbed a basket and went and f did all the sorting out and said, here you go. <laughs> so 
I get treated really good by people because I just treat them like they treat me. And that, in my opinion, is anarchy. Not There's a, a list of rules on the door as you enter, you know, don't steal, don't kill, don't... No, none of that shit. It says open Monday through Saturday or whatever on the, on the window. Hmm. The hours that they're available, just innocent shit. I don't see any of that, you know, uh, closed circuit televisions in every fucking place where I go. Some places have them just to sell them. <laughs> they sell TVs and phones and oh, all this, all this dead end shit that goes nowhere. Well, I guess you got to be old to really to really see that uh, the trap in our technology, <laughs> our technology. What a, what a joke that is. Hmm. Tesla tried to give us electricity like uh, what was that a hundred and something years ago. Maybe a hundred and something now. And Mr. Westinghouse said, oh, no, no, you can't put a meter on that. Oh, Frumpy's laughing at Grim, putting up Motorhead. We are Motorhead. Live 2000. Mm. Subtle as a train wreck, Mr. Grim. Because I got up uh, about 7.30 and cut the last half hour. You're uh balls to the wall but i have to listen to the whole thing on monday like i normally do get caught up on my week because tomorrow i have a secret for my trivia game i think i can beat all you people this time because i got that new software that tells you what the answer is as soon as the question pops up <laughs> so that so if i can type faster you're in trouble this week. <laughs> New software that shows you the answer. Hmm. I used to use that on the poker tables at this uh, site I played on in America when before they made gambling online uh, illegal. So it was like, I don't know, maybe uh, nine, eight or nine, somewhere there, eight, nine, before 10. I think it was illegalized in 10 or 11. But I was be in this uh, tournament with hundreds and hundreds of people and if I managed to stay in the game for a while and get anywhere near the money I'd make jokes about well the reason I'm doing so good today is I can see your cards I got that new software that shows me your hand <laughs> some people didn't find that humor you know they just thought it was uh, they thought I was telling them the truth <laughs> they get mad at me <laughs> you don't you can't do that no I can't I was just joking then they'd get hey wait a minute you really got that stuff <laughs> so while we're having a poker tournament we're we're jabbing each other about this imaginary software I'm pretending to have and people were more fun back in, you know now not so much now today I think things are a little bit more on uh, What's the right word for it? Uh, hmm. Serious. Everybody and his dog is serious. I'm serious. You're serious. Well, Cirque's out with the dog, so Cirque's not being too serious right now. <laughs> She's just out having a little evening stroll with the pooch. <clears throat> but me? I wanted to do me a dark table and talk about anarchism and complain about how misrepresented we are in the public eye and the we is still an individual you know because whether your version of anarchism even matches mine that in itself is a whole nother story because i think it's a really individual kind of thing but the basic concept is you know don't hurt like rob don't hurt me i won't hurt you we get along and that's exactly how it works until you got too many people crowded in too small of an area and then all of a sudden, the um, the dynamics of society take control of you. And some people, you guys ain't going to believe this, but some people go out of their way to go out into public places and be disturbing assholes and create havoc and start controversy out in the public. And that's the problem, I think, we have as a society you know <clears throat> uh, but Grimner is totally serial and Meister Brow is vote conscience how about not voting to do anything mm. 
Yeah, but the jury doesn't know that one, Rob. We're going to shift gears and go to the chat on that one. Jury nullification. I've I've seen links that say the uh, the judges will go shit fucking bat nut crazy if their jurors are instructed that they've got the abilities that they got. They don't want them to know the rules that govern being on a jury. They they want the jury to be dependent on the judge and do everything the judge says, which kind of makes them useless. Hmm. And now Woodman is bragging about being on a jury and hanging that jury up because he didn't want to submit to their group mentality think. That's the way I read it. Hmm. They were talking of submitting contempt against me and saying I came in biased. And they were going to tell the judge. Tell the judge. Where, 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 where? That's, and that shit works, too. Admiralty Court. Police. I don't know how people survive any of that shit. Hmm. I think I just got through all that shit in my 20s by luck. You know, just uh, dumb, blind, doodah. Look, no plan, no ideas, just doing what I felt like doing, and I picked the right road, and it ended. But good God, when the cops got you for their little mind games, because they can do anything they want to. And remember this, folks, they arrest you first, then you got to prove you didn't do whatever they've accused you of doing. Oh, what a tangled web we weave. And then now you got the public splitting in, into two because half of them are starting to become aware that the police don't give two flying fucks about you one way or the other. They work for the state. And, you know, all that citizenship, back to the anarchy, if all that citizen stuff, if you look it up and see what these words mean, first off, and then you look at the way that the government treats you Second off, and at the third step, you come out of it and you're supporting it. You're obviously missing the first two steps. You're not saying something clearly. Mm. Uh, that depends on the crime. And, you know, it's like not guilty. Oh, man. According to the Admiralty Court, any any interaction between you and them puts you submitting to them so whether you're not guilty or guilty is and even a, it's not even an issue it's that you've submitted your rights away and they can do whatever the mood makes them feel like doing they don't owe you anything they owe you owe them you're in their territory you're their their property and that's not clear to a lot of people they they've seen too many tv shows where the good-looking girl comes in there in a dress slid up to her ass and saves the guy by the hair of his balls from the gas chamber machine. But, no, I seen a, I seen a thing on Netflix about that. They got this guy for a murder, and the local schmokel sheriff doesn't like him, and on and on and on, and they put him in prison, and they proved he wasn't guilty in prison, and then they still didn't want to let him out. Because once something's on that record, those fucking people in power, they don't want to let go of it. Because if you threaten them, you know, if you threaten them once and, and they, they let you fight and then you win, well, that makes number two look a little bit less intimidating. So they don't want to encourage people to challenge the official record. So what the, what the state did was the state reversed the damn thing and the feds refused to abide by it. No, no, no. Keep him in prison. Don't let him out. Wow. Proven by all the things that they consider to be proof that he's in prison you know, and he didn't do it still wasn't enough because maybe money? I don't know. People in position got grudges and more inventive ways to take their aggression out on you than the average bear. I don't know. But being in jail for a murder that you didn't do. Yeah. And see, and this is a result of society, you know. I don't think the anarchist mindset would put you in that position in the first place. Um, and then, well, I guess you could argue, well, what about uh, self-defense? Uh, uh, uh. Well, you know, if you, you don't... yeah. 
I think you got to look for problems to get problems. Nothing just happens to people. You set yourself up somehow in society to get whatever it is you're getting. Otherwise, why would I be getting all this good if, if you know, if I did? Hey, dork cakes. Hmm. Mental decided to show up to the dork table and enjoy our hospitality. Well, barman, give give cakes a, a pipe and a cup of coffee and tell him to take it easy and relax. Yeah, I know he's late. Wow. Better late than never, though. Sometimes I wonder if I show up here. Uh, oh, yeah, this, uh, I was listening to, who was it? Listening to some rerun, some marriage show this morning. And she was going on about the Kavanaugh thing. And I, they did the same damn going on and all the people were all in an uproar about the position and who they were going to put in it. And that Roberts guy was just as big a piece of shit as this other Kavanaugh guy. And they got him in there, you know. And nothing changed for us. Not good, anyway. If it did, it changed for the the rich. Their, their people, you know, the people that they love and that love them. Because if the little guy is gullible enough to think that the the Supreme Court gives a flying fuck about him, then he thinks he's a citizen. Or her, you know, he, she, it. Oh, I saw a thing about you, you're not supposed to to call people male or female names in colleges anymore. <laughs> Me start cakes. But, you know, that way you don't insult the non-binary people. Well, I, I live in a really, really small town, you know, where uh, if somebody around here is non-binary or non-gender or whatever this shit is, I don't even fucking know. They don't say nothing to me about it so mm, and i don't have any intention of ever going to an american university and mixing with those dolts in education i mean crying out loud if they're so fucking smart why can't they read a book and find out that the the feds gobbled up the damn um university debts <laughs> Now you'll never get out of it. Once once the government gets their nose up your ass, you're done. Anarchy. See, because what would we do? They go, well, you'd have to have something to replace it. Well, I have a feeling that anarchist groups would be a smaller, life, lighter life. People wouldn't want their electricity shipped in from fucking Portugal if they live in Denmark. I think that if we were living in an anarchist, truthful fucking fashion in the first place, half of the shit we use, we wouldn't want to use it anymore. They'd want to upgrade to hemp products and <clears throat> stuff. Maybe smoke a little cannabis, you know, take the edge off. I know he, she, it, shit. I don't, Grimner, what the fuck is wrong with people? Good God. I mean, you know, okay. So there's boys that like boys and girls that like girls. They had that shit when I was growing up. It just, people just minded their own fucking business. They didn't wear a sign wrapped around there said that, you know, I blow cats, you know, dig me. I got my own group now. That shit was, even, that was just a way to get your ass kicked behind a bar somewhere. I mean, fuck, people were, they were probably more intimidated by shit and more willing to, to do something about it than they are now. You know? Now you can be anything. You can identify as a toaster, get 20% off if you're Jewish. Hey, I'm a Jew for a day. Give me my discounts. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what are we going to do? Well, in a perfect world, we'll have to try to discuss this anarchy thing with other people and see where that goes. But I think I've pointed uh, myself out how I see this over the years the same way. I've been steady. I don't rock. Um, I don't want anything more than is readily available. And I'm not an opportunist out there trying to acquire and gather. And uh, the, the house we're in is... Cirque was teasing me a little back a couple months ago about, hey, maybe we should get a smaller house. And I thought, yeah, and then when you want to go sow something 
where are you going to do that at in your not sewing room? I guess out in the yard in the garage. <laughs> she thought about it and realized that no, it's the the way things are now. It it suits us, and it's not too big. It's just big enough, you know. And but to get smaller at this point with the animals and and the hobbies would uh, triple the workload probably. And who knows where we'd end up. I don't really want to move. I, I like it here. Mm. I got this town kind of, I don't know. I'm comfortable in it. So um, things are just the way I like them. I guess uh, Cirque's always trying to make sure I'm comfortable. You know, if, if I wasn't comfortable, then we'd do, get together and do something about it. <laughs> don't call him a toaster. He's a convection oven. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Hans will fix me. He never says nothing to you or Grim about pot. I've noticed that over the years. Boy, he backs backs me in a corner and calls me all kinds of names. Ooh, but you know what? He never says shit to anybody else. <laughs> I don't. I, I feel special. Maybe, maybe I get up his nose in, in a fashion that the rest of you just don't know how to do. Because I'm watching Star Trek. If you can hear that in the background, let me know. I'll shut it down. But the wife took off and decided to take the dog out while I did my first hour of this here program. And uh, the introduction's a little louder than the, the rest of the program. Did you just assume my appliance? I don't know. It, it sounds ridiculous to me, but I guess there's people out there. Well, it went from... You know, you couldn't say kike, and then you couldn't say nigger, and now you now you can't say she or he. It, control, just a way to just get the public to dance in the in the direction that the herd's being pushed into. You know, it doesn't have anything to do with your rights or your wrongs or your abilities or your what do you call them? Oh. Mm. Privileges. You have. George Carlin coined that. He goes, yeah, you don't have rights. You got privileges. And that's about what, what it comes down to. And they can take your privileges any damn time they like to. And, well, they didn't have to take them. People just willingly uh, sat back and watched them get shelved. And it was like, wow. They, they had this two-foot-thick document already printed. And I thought, hmm. I wonder how long it took them to write that shit. And then here they are two months after the 9-11 thing trying to... Oh, we just finished this and this is... Uh, here we go. French toast? Uh-oh. Pancakes. You can't put up French toast posts. What are you, nuts? Hans is just jealous of your awesome life, Flash. Uh, I probably... I don't know. I'm sure not jealous of his. Hello, baby. Uh, <laughs> except for um it, ex except for Hansel. He's exceptional. Uh they're doing the waffle pancakes thing. Or is it a truffle? I don't know. Eh? Anyway, so I guess I hmm, what a what a thing to be faced with. Trying to explain freedom to uh people that think that they've already exist in, in the land of the free and the home of the brave and all that horse shit. What I didn't realize for a long time when I was living in it, maybe the first 20 years, is that there wasn't anything free about it. I mean, it it's de it depended on how you... If, if I had been plugged into the system and not been able to travel and shit, I wouldn't have thought I was free. So life took me where it took me. And I got to do a lot of things other people said couldn't be done and visit stuff in places that you can't define them to anybody. But every once in a while I can say, yeah, I was there. <laughs> and uh, I don't know. In the end, it's my memories of stuff that matter, not the comparisons with everybody else. Where you've been, where you haven't been. But it's kind of fun, though, because like... Um, Mary's been to England, and I suppose if you've lived in America your whole life and read about England or seen it on TV and all that, but never been there, 
That would be a kick to go. It was a kick to me when I first went there, but it was a, like a family thing. So it, it wasn't my idea to do it. it. I was doing something for my mom, more or less, and getting a vacation out of it on the on the outside. But when I first saw it, it was it. I never did ever got used to driving on the wrong side of the street. Yeah, the opposite side, wrong, whatever you want to call it. I heard Vinny explain it once by saying that uh, if you're right-handed and you're driving on the right-hand side of the street, well, your your uh, your shooting hand is on the inside of the car, not the outside where the window's at. And I thought, well, it is if you're left-handed, <laughs> but I didn't say anything to him. I didn't want to bust his bubble, but it it's like the middle finger thing. It's it's a good story to explain it, you know, but. It's, Again, it's probably one of those government mind things. They they do these things for reasons that they don't ever tell us the truth about. Or you discover it on some obscure fucking link buried in, in another bit of information that you, you didn't even know you were looking for. Hmm. Like, uh, ah, somebody else finally posted on Minds yesterday or the day before a link that I've been posting for years about... The uh, the police, according to SCOTUS, have no duty to protect the individual, period. They do it, they're doing it because they want to. They don't have to. You can't sue them, you can't punish them, you can't do anything except say, hey, and then SCOTUS says, well, we, we ruled and you guys put us here, so shut the fuck up, and there you go. <laughs> and hey, But anyway, I finally saw somebody else posting this very obscure link i found on youtube years ago and it's catching on I and mean, it's slow 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 we're we're never going to get any numbers ab about us but it's just still that people uh, besides finding out through me or finding out from their own looking or their own friends or enemies <laughs> or whatever they got out there to to keep them in tune with with the reality yeah you know, tonight I was teasing Cirque before the show, and I said to her, I was going to uh, do the anarchist thing, but I was going to introduce it as Bullwinkle, and, and I forgot. <laughs> I know. But it, Bullwinkle's a hard voice for me to do, and then I got my wife watching me now, so now, now I'm under pressure. But you know how he... How he uh, Will, let's let's do a a, a dork table, and we'll do the pro, the podcast will be about anarchism. What do you think about that? And uh, that's the kind of voice that I think the public would expect to hear as a representative of anarchism. <laughs> you know, a uh, Bullwinkle the Moose, because you know who does Bull, Bullwinkle's a good guy. His best friend is a flying squirrel. His arch enemies are Russian spies. I mean, Bullwinkle's the bomb when you think about it. But they gave him that goofy voice, and he, he's hard to take serious. But if you ever have a couple of hours to just kick back and, and listen, go on YouTube and open up some of the Bullwinkle and Rocky compilations. <laughs> and Inside the stories and, and between, uh, between jokes, there's really some good stuff in there. I found one about... Uh, Bargain Boy. They called him Bargain because he was 50% off. <laughs> I thought, holy shit, this is an old fucking joke, but that's what I mean. All the old stuff was buried underneath all this new crap that's not even funny. Hey, let me go back to the chat and see what we have going on. Uh, what is Grimner yakking about? Please at least leave us alone in our living rooms. Let me have my toaster and my TV and my steel belted radials, and I won't say anything. Just leave us alone. Well, I'm not going to leave you alone. <laughs> well, okay. I don't know who, <laughs> Flashwinkle, I don't know who, who you're leaving alone, but I, I don't really think you're a big, you're not a big threat to society, Grim. I mean, you just voice your opinion. I don't, I don't see any harm in that. I don't see any harm in Hans voicing his opinion. I just haven't yet, in two and a half years, I've never seen him voice an opinion. I've seen him repeat other people's opinion, but never come out with anything original from his own perspective. It's, 
you know, just like me, everything I say has all been done, said, somebody else wrote it. Some, you can't be original in the world anymore. Unless you're an anarchist. <laughs> so it's the only thing that that the individual has left is to tell the state to go f take a flying fuck. And then again, it's it's a it's like a, a an idea. It's not something you're going to physically get out there and, you know, go spray paint fuck society on the public library wall. No, 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 no. I'm not against society that's, uh, what do you call it? That The collective isn't the problem. It's the pol the politics behind the collective that fuel us. See, my beef is with the, the system fucking us day in and day out with crap and lies. And then 80 years go by and they say, look, science just found out we were wrong about cannabis. <laughs> <laughs> just they, they just figured it out hey did you know that just like in 2000 they went hey that cannabis shit's pretty good people you better start smoking it so we can tax you <laughs> we need some more you know tax money so we can educate you and build you some roads so that you don't have to walk in the dirt and shit like that ride camels mm. but well, here we are, 18 years later. Guess what? They fucked up weed. They've managed to, yeah, they got a patent on, what is it? They got a patent on, so which one of you guys out there knows all this legal schmeagle crap? You know what I'm talking about, man. They got those damn um, patent laws. So they made a synthetic to weed, GMO shit, and uh I guess Monsanto's finally mastered it, and now they're manufacturing it and sending it out to the public as marijuana. I guess legally it is marijuana because it's not cannabis. Whatever this shit is, don't let them fool you. Well, you're going to let them fool you. If you, if you live in a, a place where it's legal and you go to their stores and you buy their shit, you're probably better off going black market like the old days and just getting it from, you know, Joaquin and, and Jose. But, you know, the government's safe. Uh, uh, yeah, well, when I first got to Freetown, they had some uh, buds. I don't remember the name, blah, blah, blah. But I do remember that when I bought it, it looked good and it smelled very good. But when I smoked it, I was getting uh, side effects, anger from smoking pot. It was making me anxious and uncomfortable. So I told my friend, no, I cannot use this. This is not going to work for me. That's how addicted to the shit I am. If, if, if you can tell somebody else, hey, you know, I've been smoking this shit since I was so old. And this ain't the shit I've been smoking. Something's different about this, and I don't like it, and I don't want to use it. There, where's the addiction part? You know, I think addiction is when you use it, and the results of it don't matter. It's that you used it. You know, like diet coke. Try pulling a diet coke out of somebody's hand sometime. You want to see an addiction? Ooh, man. Try pulling a joint out of somebody's hand, and they're probably like, hey, give me my joint back. They wouldn't, but take take a Diet Coke, ooh, or even a beer. That would probably work, too. We're all, we're doing things so wrong in so many ways, you know, and the proof is in the pudding. Just, if you, if you live in a metropoli, just go out amongst your peers and walk around and don't be in a hurry. Just take a nice hour or two hour, two hour stroll and see who pushes past you and who's pissed off because you're not walking fast enough and that kind of stuff. It, it exists. It's real out there. Now, when I go into the little town I'm going at, I can walk any pace I want to and people just walk around me. I have been pushed, shoved, yelled, honked at, uh, run over, haven't been threatened to be run over. <laughs> Hey, Hannah's saying hi to... Hey, Hannibal. Hannibal.
Calm down. Well, Hannah's doing her impression of security right now. She must hear an intruder out in the out in the street somewhere. Probably a cat. Go get the cat out in the backyard. You. Oh, the wife brought me the elixir. Yeah, I'm kind of stuck. I'm stuck because I've been um, I've been doing the dork table for a long time. To me, a long time. Maybe not to other people. And I don't know how burnt out this topic uh, has gotten. But government and anarchy, uh, they're not the same thing. They're not... They're not opposites. They're not comparable. They're it's apples and oranges, you know. Uh, and your fear out there <clears throat> in Radio Land of living without a, a stated government, I don't see what the. Uh, oh, I guess it would fall back on. Oh, who's going to supply the electricity and the water and the, all the mainstays that you got to have to survive? I believe that local people would uh, weather very well if if the main sh if the main supply shit was severed and there was no telling how long it would be before we could restore it. I think there's enough local intelligence and machinery and equipment to replace it in a reasonable amount of time because there's so many older people here and. I've learned living in Denmark that, uh, unlike my American f friends and uh, family, uh, the elders in the family get respected out in this part of the world. You know, people people don't uh, run over the old and and treat them badly in person. They seem to be fairly decent to them. Um, I'm I'm not uh, I'm not that familiar with it in the states, I and mean, it's been a while since I was home. But still, what I remember of seeing how people, other people, treated their elders. I wasn't too bad on grown-ups. I like grown-ups better than I like my uh, my peers, age group peers, whatever. I was always hanging out with people three, four, five, ten years older than me. But the immediate age thing, now I suffered greatly. I was never quite... I was a dork with the other kids, so... No, there was no, you know, big line to hang out with me. Uh, I was more like, a, what do you call it, a individual. I wanted to be doing something by myself, away from every. That was my own thing, different from what the group was doing. So let's see. Rob works is saying anarchy dot dot and minus the absence of dot dot archy. Minus rulers. Yeah, that's exactly it. We don't need rulers. Well, me and Rob don't seem to need them. Uh, Grimner don't seem to need them. Moose, Pancakes, Woody. I mean, you know, the local crowd here today. But there's a few holdouts that... Uh, I posted that thing about Boston, and sure as fuck, uh, Hans walked all into it. Praising the police and the FBI for their good work. And, you know, they caught the bad guy. No, they didn't. That was a freaking uh, government op staged by Obama to put a gun limit down. That's what they want. They want you to be afraid. And my point is, I don't care how well armed you want to talk. Everybody's got 100 guns. My ass, the day they did that, going door to door, there was no resistance. None. How the fuck are you going to resist that with a 38? I mean, please. These people got tanks. Oh, I got my, what, my M15 or something. I've read all the numbers. They don't impress me because tanks don't fuck around. <laughs> and I studied the road to get in here. I don't think they could invade here. It would be like, <laughs> they'd have to invade slowly. <laughs> there's, there's no road. <laughs> Uh, anyway, you'd have to see it to believe it. Mm. I'll, I think I've posted some pictures over on realliberty.org, the the new uh, little site that Grimner's working with Bo and Anton. And apparently they got a new upgrade and the site's running a little faster. I was on it yesterday and uh, my little smiley faces were easier to use. So yeah, things are going to improve with time, you know. That's what anarchists do. You know, anarchists work with the problem at hand and fix it. They don't 
sit around and make a committee of 12 to look at it in six months and then after that send it to another committee for approval and then back to the first committee so that they can vote on the second committee's approval ah eh, fuck all that shit that's your status mind going ape shit i mean i guess that stuff works but it's so fucking slow good god i mean I'm not one to go, hey, doesn't anybody take a walk anymore and mean it so much, but I kind of mean it, but I don't mean it all the time. Some things need to be done and some things need to be avoided. <laughs> Government, not so much, but uh, daily life, you need to do that. And depending on the state for everything, got us where we're at in the first place. Shitty electricity, food, water. Okay, there's... There's the result of voting and being for a group, you know, a group that you can't see, that you don't know, that handles all your important business, and that they're too good to even talk to you. Try writing them and see if you get a response. <laughs> yeah. Senator Johns is busy getting his wanker played with, and, well, he can't come to the phone right now. Well, he came on the phone, but that's another story. And that's the kind of crap that we have as representation. They're all up on sex charges, pedophile charges, stealing charges, tax evasion, racketeering, fraud. You name it, these fuckers are doing it, right? But they're elected officials. <laughs> so, that's some, I guess that somehow changes. I couldn't get my mind straight. That somehow changes the dynamic. You know, they're... We, we picked them, so, well, <laughs> we'll live with what they do. I, I don't know. Those uh, fires that they were re talking about, they were reporting in California. I've seen some pictures. Those are the damnedest fires I ever saw. What the fuck? How do you burn houses and cars and the trees don't get burnt? I asked that the last time I saw it over the summertime, and somebody had an explanation, so I'm not asking anymore. If you can really explain that away, don't tell me. I, I, think, I be, think we're being had one more time. Mm. Now we will take a trip down memory lane because the text is behind me, and I will read the chat and see what the wonderful people have to say. Oh, ah, RLM got the upgrade, not RLLO. Oh, well, I just kind of assumed because it was RLO because it was easier for me to use yesterday, Grim. But RLMs, uh, I get on there through Ice Chat and boom, 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 boom. So when I open a link, you're as fast as anything. I wouldn't know. But see, Rob Works didn't know. Ha, ha, ha. So yeah, Grim says RLO actually went from a dedicated server to shared hosting recently is that good i don't even know it got a hmm out of rob works but what i don't know what that exactly means in you know nerd talk i don't do the nerd chat very well grim i have hard enough oh okay sir compared it to having your own house or living in a motel hmm so instead of so the dedicated is a privacy thing and the shared hosting is puts us out in the open somehow or what i don't know i got no big deal to be all in, you know invisible on the internet i don't got enough money to interest the government they don't even care if i'm alive they just don't want me to be begging them for shit so that's the deal that i got with the fed is i leave you alone if you leave me alone and everybody seems to be okay I think Rob just heard the Cirque explanation of the Grimner comment. Wow, hey, Grim's got an interp a Danish interpreter. <laughs> yeah, Grim was speaking nerd on the RLM, and my wife had to explain to me what it meant, because that's how bad at computers I am. I don't do the, uh, the nerd chat. And, yeah, RLM is a website. Oh, okay. Well, I don't. I don't know. They're Rob Works. They're all websites to me. It's all part of the interwebs. <laughs> so keep it simple for people like me that just push buttons. I don't need to know what the button's for. I just push it. And uh, I did the change thing for the uh, dork table from its uh, 
Tuesday's opposition of In a Perfect World. And I must have done it right because Grimner didn't even say not a word in an hour. I must have done something correct the first time. I'm slipping. So watch me pull a rabbit out of my hat. <laughs> anyway. Oh, he says the, um, it still works fine. Uh, it's not enough traffic and the script is light enough that it still works fine. So you're getting the results that you uh, had intended to get all along. You're just using a simpler version to make it run. Ah, if things improve and we get crowded over there, I'm sure that the three of you will figure out how to fix that. That's what you guys do. The world gives us an intellectual problem and you send the intellectual problem to the intellects to work on. And then the intellects send the physical problem to the technicians to fix. You know, that's how the e world seems to run. And Grimm's holding two seats. He's inside of both. Me, I don't, I don't so much want to help anybody as um, just stay out of the way and not make the mess worse. You know, it's like my interest in uh, the thing Rob explained to me is a converter to convert a present 60 hertz system to a 54 hertz system. Now, hopefully, I got the, the talk right finally, and I figured that part out of it. And a little more reading, check it out, because I've got this whole, well, right now I've got a, a few hobbies that have been taking up <laughs> most of my free time. But eventually, I'll sit down and I'll want to read something new. And when I... I do. I want it to be about the uh, resonance and the vibration. <clears throat> Let's see. You did the shoutcast fine, but Spreaker... Oh, crap. I fucked up on the Spreaker one again. Okay, well, did you cover it? I'll, I'll get to the... I'll learn this stuff one way or another. At least I'm trying, you know, because when we first started me on the radio, it was pretty bad. I, I did not follow the instructions very well. They just... Even reading them just kind of confuses me because one step leads into the another step should just be easy. But something about the way the internet does it uh, just strikes me as something completely different that I don't fully understand and it slows me down a lot. Maybe it's me making a big deal out of it or trying to put the work off on everybody else like a good Jew. Which makes a lot of sense, but I really think I'm just seeing the internet from an old perspective. I haven't been able to grasp the inter the internet in a in a way that makes it easy. It's very complicated in my mind for some reason. So the littlest change and eh, but like every other thing with repetition, I get better with a little practice. Hey, Moose even jumped in here on the dork table to entertain us with her. Smiley, wait, hi, a dork cake, Z, smiley, good morning, hey, no smiley face, huh, hmm. well, we have the love chat in the RLM, and that's what's important, you know, the, uh, back to the political shit, though, uh, I don't know, I've asked people, can you, can you tell me what good has come out of government ever, anything, just name one thing that the, the gov what? Roads, roads, streets, roads. <sighs> my wife, my wife, the National Socialist, has just declared that the roads. <laughs> it's it's all about the roads. <laughs> I don't know. I I. Just try not to um, destroy shit when I go out in public, and I I think it's just more bullshit thrown at us. You know that when you get into a group, these groups are just too big. <clears throat> of course, your populations in most places are too big, but they won't have that. No, 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 that can't be the problem. <laughs> <laughs> Those laboratory experiments with rats, that was just a bunch of crap. Ah, RobWorks posted my European Voltage Essentials 220 volts of electric power at 50 hertz frequency. This is somewhat technical. Well, that's okay. I'm going to open up a copy of that one and get to it after maybe after the show when I'm 
chilling from my two-hour rant on absolutely nothing to try to get the people at the reallibertymedia.com just a little giggle on a Saturday afternoon. Because, man, we know how hard it is to just fucking sit back and laugh at this shit because other people look at you funny. They don't get it. Or what? Oh, man. What the other suicide one is knocking medicine. Wow. Hmm. Oh, well. Are you resting cakes or are you just being a lazy slug on a Saturday? <laughs> oh, okay. Rob's sending me. Um, yeah, Rob's sending me links. I got them open, too. But I can't do the reading thing unless there's something to read. Maybe I'll read one. Um, running short on original ideas, but. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So, Rob puts up the variable frequency motor generator sets. Ooh, and that's a pretty looking generator, too. Okay, I'm going to get off the uh, electronic porn and go back to the RLM. But thanks, Rob. No, I'll take a... I could, I could have done that all by myself, but it's more interesting and it's more fun to do this kind of hard shit when other people that know what they're doing show you an interest and say, hey... This is the shortcut that you're going to start here and you're headed for that. But here, here's the fastest way to get there. And I think that's what learning is about. Not necessarily regurgitating what everybody else tells you, like I might seem to be doing with Rob. But I'm going to open up these links and like I did just now and saw that generator or the picture of it and read the description and went, wow, that's a beautiful looking machine. Because... Most people that aren't interested in that would look and not see a beautiful machine. They just see something on a table. And that would be the end of it. Oh, he's making bacon, drinking coffee, and smiling. Good cakes. Some people aren't capable of those three things all at the same time. I think I'm one of them. I don't do the bacon. But as you just heard, I do the coffee. Let's see, 45 to 65 HC, actually. It will do 54. Well, I'm so, I'm, I'm so uh, impressed with the way that Larry explained that to me about the vibration and the harmonics that whatever the truth is, it will show itself. That, that much I'm, I'm convinced of. And this is the road that I'm going to walk down to get to it. And Larry got me started on it, and now you're helping me a little further. And then I'll gather all my little data, and I'll take a look at it and make up my own mind. Oh, who's a whore-like company? Oh, yeah, all companies. Grim, you know, that's the way it is. There's not much out there that you, that you can purchase that isn't tainted by greed and banks and politics. You know, they're going to regulate the fuck out of us so that we can't do these things. That's what this has been about for 50 years. Slowly, just taking away the rights and privileges of people to live a, a, away from this mess and be more comfortable. They don't want that. They want us out there voting for Pelosi and Feinstein and Trump. <laughs> Trump. <laughs> Hillary. <laughs> I saw somebody write on the, on the Real Liberty Media a couple of weeks ago about voting for Obama. Because <laughs> he's... <laughs> he, he was such an eloquent speaker. Let me tell you something. If I'm reading, I can be an eloquent speaker. If I'm talking out my ass like he did, I stutter and stammer just as badly as he did. Because off the top of your head, it's not as easy... As reading, <laughs> you, you know, and that doesn't make you all that smart because you can read out loud. If it did, well, shit, a lot of us would be like in powers of position right now who aren't. Well, wait a minute. Before you can run for political parties, guess who you got to give your allegiance to? Go on, take a guess. I dare you. Mm -hmm. The Jews, as we've discussed on the dork table many many times if you don't swear allegiance to israel then you can't run for office where you live 
And I'm not so sure they don't do that here either, because there's all that anti-Semite bullshit. What a fucking scam. You know who your boss is, because he's the motherfucker. You can't call a motherfucker without suffering. You know? That's the boss. <laughs> mm. Let's see what Grimner said. Ah, uh, that generator company is named Horlick. Oh, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> wow, that one got right by me. Let me go. I got to look. <laughs> okay. Horlick Company. Hey, hey, what a name. You know, it's like Bangkok, Thailand, you know. Go figure. Why didn't they name it Bang Pussy, Thailand? That would have been, you know. I, well, maybe they were they were looking ahead into the future and they saw that gay shit coming. Who knows? <laughs> Well, they're not all funny. Don't get all excited out there in radio land. I make fun of everybody, except anarchists, because they're not in a group. I don't think there's any way that uh, it could fail, because the premise of the anarchy mindset, to me, and it's my impression, is that there's a, a handful of things that you don't do. You don't do them on Sunday. You don't do them because the moon is full. You don't do them because you have the dead skull and you're wearing the correct robe. You don't do them ever, 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 period. Not acceptable. And your other friends that share that mentality, we don't look at each other and go, oh, you an anarchist? Oh, me too. It comes up in chat on the internet. But it never comes up in chat in the real world. Not for me. And the closest I've come to that topic was at the bar. And it was the bartender explaining to me that her version of Denmark is this is an atheist-based country. The religion thing died. People do not worship uh, the thing in the sky like they did 50 or 100 years ago. It's kind of dying. Hmm. So I made a point of telling her, I said, yeah, but the church is the biggest building in the whole place. Well, if you do a little reading or, or listen to a few links, there's people that have explanations for that, too. Because we all come out of some religious society. That's what the how the societies got started. The church financed it. And, of course, like Trump, this is the mentality that the church has always had. The biggest building in city is the source of that's the center of everything that's where the power exists well it worked uh on the bigger populations but i don't think it worked so good on the smaller ones now i haven't been home and lived in a small population to to judge it at back home but the small populations i've lived among out in uh, scotland and here the scots were um it was like uh Hmm. Not so much religious, but like the the wealthier people on the island took that Sunday period to, to go into town and show off their fancy clothes. You know, they're all dressed, decked out. The girls are all decked out, blah, blah, blah. But as far as a, a society where the, the religion was prevalent and people lived by any kind of moral code, I thought it was a lot looser in Scotland than it is here in Denmark. Yeah. Of course, that could have been island living, but Aberdeen was pretty bad, too, as far as uh, violence and alcohol and drugs in the street and all that kind of shit. People were pretty loose about all that crap. Um, but it didn't affect me. I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just lucky where when I whenever I wander around strange people's towns doesn't seem to ever bother whoever whoever's holding that territory just lets me go through it no matter what uh, I haven't been harassed in in a territory situation since good lord New Jersey in the late 70s I think when I was still a teenager but since then it's never never anything serious comes of it and I've had people warn me, oh, don't go over there in this part of town, and don't go over there in that part of town. And for whatever the reason, I think it's my dad that got me started on that was bragging about how they warned him when he was in Germany to stay out of the East End of London, because that's where all the trouble in London was. So apparently, that's where my mother was 
born, so that's exactly where he went. <laughs> he found himself a little English woman. So, <laughs> I'm just carrying on the family tradition without employing the airlines in the, in the middle. <coughs> well, actually, I think my mom lost the toss, and me and my brother were accidentally born in America, because my mom wanted to to do it from England, but my father didn't. And then at, at the end, the funniest part of it was 22 years into the damn marriage, they decided to go to England. <laughs> so, so it was, uh, my whole existence has just been like the, the toss of a coin and a fluke. Things that weren't ever supposed to happen, you know, a Mexican, American, and an English russian or whatever i think she was russian and something but you know english born american born and they meet in london and then they settle in in california so it was very new my mom was one of those pioneers i think the international flights just broke out in like 56 57 in the first place where you could get a commercial flight from europe to america that was affordable And here we are, <clears throat> and, <laughs> oh, wow, I don't, I don't know, I, I kind of miss having my mom to talk to about uh, my positions politically, you know, we used to get on the phone every couple of weeks and have a half hour, hour chitter chatter and catch up on crap and family and this, that and the other, and she's been gone for about a year now, but it's funny how when people go in your life that you still, you find yourself thinking about them as though they're still around and, you know, I haven't quite, you know, connected with, oh, no, no, that's, that's finished. Now, let's go see, yeah, the Horlick, that was funny, uh, they're not saying too much on the RLM chat right now. They're very quiet while I talk about my crazy life in the world, but. I don't think my life's any crazier than anybody else's. I just think I, I've uh, taken more opportunities to try something different without an intention. You know, just see where, wonder where this is going to go to. This is what I did when I met Cirque. I didn't have any plans about nothing. Go to Denmark and meet her and see how it happens. And boom. Well, that's pretty much the same way I did everything else in my life. You know, um, either you want to do something or you don't. I don't think of uh, obstacles and what do you call it? Uh, you know, things that are in your way that need to be moved. No, those are immovable objects. So you either need to find a way around them or you need to go through them or over them. But they're just, it's just not another part of the puzzle. It's, it's not a, it doesn't have a, doesn't have a value with me. I don't look at a problem and gauge it. Well, that's the number five on my scale of one to ten. This thing, this motherfucker has got to be a nine six. No, problem is a problem. Um, whether I get a splinter in my finger or whether I break a finger, it's still pain. I, I don't have the ability to discern. At some point of physical impairment, my body shuts down for me and I don't feel it. So, um... Till it starts to heal, I'm usually pretty good. And when healing hits, then, then I need to smoke a few pipe loads. Speaking of, hey, you. Uh, there you go. I was begging the wife for a little assistance at the dark table program. Because she's over there on the couch doing her knitting. Hmm. She don't want to sit with me while I'm on the dark table because I'm so hot. <laughs> she couldn't resist me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we all have our fantasies. Mm. Ah, just finishing off my delicious elixir. Well, anyway. Uh, mm. Between the bacon bacon and the one. <laughs> <laughs> Or, or lake, <laughs> or lake. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> anyway, I, I, I. Thank you, Rob. That was almost as good as, good as your meat hot joke. Because when 
when one method doesn't work, there's always another. <laughs> it's mine. I don't know. What would we do without... Uh, I wonder. See, I guess the big cities are trapped. You can't break all that stuff down. I lived in uh, New York for a while on a uh, apartment building, so it's 72nd. I was on 72nd and 2nd. So uh, I, I think I eventually moved around the block from... It was the same block, just to the Second Street side of it, from Seventy Second out, Seventy Second Street to Second Avenue. So eh, I didn't really go anywhere, but uh, I went to a third floor walk up from a first floor. And looking back on those days, uh, if anything would have been shut down food or water or something like that would have been horrible living in the middle of all those millions of people it would have been isolating because you're you know you're invisible in that in that town wait a minute hey whose girlfriend are you got? i think they're talking about my wife over here yep because everybody likes you cirque <laughs> Yeah, well, you're nicer than me. If you were me, they wouldn't like you so much. Because I say mean things to the RLM people like voting is for suckers. And what other great, wonderful shit have I come up with? Um, yeah. Hey, why don't you vote for somebody to tell you what you cannot do? What? <laughs> Cirque's just sitting over there knitting while I do my... A uh, little bit left of the dork table. And uh, I don't know. I've, Like usual, my mind's just bouncing all over the place. And I feel comfortable amongst the group that I'm here. Java Doctor showed up. Well, Java Doctor left. Maybe got pinged out, whatever that is. Says quit. So I probably has something to do. Go over to the RLO and post some stuff. But uh, hmm. we got a kind of a comfortable little um follow gathering i eh, i like to call it a gathering because i don't i don't think anybody follows anybody here well it's not really a group is it a group i hate groups cirque says you're a group that does that make me a groupie oh god I'm a groupie of the group. I don't want to do that. We got to change this. This needs some more thing. We need to think this through a little further. I'm having problems with the group philosophy. What would the group think be on the reallibertymedia.com? It's uh, pretty clear that it's usually we do not appreciate authorita as a group. And then there's a few stragglers in there that, you know, support the status quo or they got a stake in it. And, you know, I understand that it, if you uh, if you're tied to this thing emotionally and it should fail, well, you would feel as though you failed because you're part of it. But if you separate your mind from that shit and just see that if it did fall, it would be the best thing for everybody. A lot of people are going to suffer. It's going to have to collapse. I mean, it can't go on like this forever. They've pulled it off for over, what, 105 years. And all the the destruction, the wake of destruction that it's left in its path. Uh, it's all been proven. The stock market's been crashed on purpose. Uh, what was that? The depressions were all manufactured by the bankers. People are just being pushed around to this moment in large groups by the press. The press tells these people over here what they want them to know about these people over there. And then these other people over here get to go bomb them people or sanction them financially or punish them somehow. It's all about punish, 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 punish. Jail, 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 jail. You know, what was it? Uh, I thought... I was making a joke with Cirque about this the other day. He said, uh, there's really only one thing America has that every other country in the world doesn't. One thing and one thing alone. And that's two million people in prison. Got more people in prison in America than any other country, no matter what kind of country it is. It's communists or whatever. How many kinds are there? 
kinds of governments do we have? Well, whatever ones, the, the freest one of all, the shining star, the fucking jewel on the crown has the most people imprisoned in the world. And the population does not see that as clearly as they should. Or either that or they see it and they're so apathetic to it that they really believe everybody there belongs there because the state said so. And wow, I've I've seen enough examples over my life to doubt that the system's right more than one time out of a hundred. <laughs> Anything I feel as though 99% of the people in a jail cell should be left out. And the, the 1% that did something, they'd surface. You'd see it. <laughs> if you've ever spent the night in a jail, you, you probably know what I'm talking about. And for those of you that haven't, keep up the good work. Staying out of jail is not, uh, it's not as easy as it sounds. A lot of people think it's real simple, but... No, those psychos with the guns, they, they just haven't broadened their... Uh, their sights are still narrow. They're still picking on a certain type of person. And I can't identify it in words, but I do realize, I really know that I don't fall into that group. There's predators and there's prey. And then there's something else that I am. I don't know what I am, but I'm not a predator anymore. I'm not a prey anymore. So there's a, a an existence in society that we're basically immune from the trappings um oh wow rob work says 25 percent of all prisoners in the world are in the united states yeah that's a yeah that's out of seven billion people wow that's see mm, so well, i i still i'm not afraid of the uh the united states that's think I, i'm gonna still say it, it's cirque if, if, if it wasn't for cirque who knows i might be i might be back in the states but no because of her i'm in denmark but i don't see it. it's a hard thing to explain to somebody else from the person that's doing it doesn't always know why they're doing what they're doing they're just doing what they want to do i guess that would be anarchism you know not going along with the you know, the family wanted me to do this and the whatever's wanted me to do that. And the state wants, everybody wants something. Well, I ended up where nobody wanted anything. So I thought, well, hey, this is kind of cool. You know, I don't know if it would work that way for anybody else because um, anarchist, you know, my mindset does not attract that uh restrictive authoritarian shit out there oh fuck yeah i was a predator fuck yeah i was a capitalist are you kidding me i was always trying to make money until i was <clears throat> well not always i'd say from about 10 or 11 years old you know that's when i started to get jobs selling newspapers you name it i'd find it and it just progressed and in my late 20s I was a headhunter and something, I don't know, something happened and I just decided I didn't want to do what I was doing and ending it was ending it. Wasn't going to ever work in that business for anybody again because I didn't want to do it. So, yeah, I went from being a, a predator because I was selling, how do you explain that to somebody? I was finding uh, bankers that were selling a certain amount of loans per month to get them to quit their job they were at to go to work for another company. So <laughs> it was real snaky and um, just basically a lot of bullshit, you know. And it wasn't wasn't that I wasn't good at what I did. It just didn't it didn't please me, and I decided to stop it. But hmm, yeah, predator is the only way to put that because you're you're. Uh, you're living off the misery and the worry and all this other shit of other people. They're actually paying your salary so that they can sweat and worry and you don't have to. It was, <clears throat> well, yeah, I don't like it. I don't like capitalism um, because of the, the corruption that it 
t attached to it all. You can't now you can't do anything running on bad shit, you know, bad food, bad water. I'm already at a disadvantage at that point. So my best efforts in the state that I'm in bring me a minimal result. And I find staying out of all that competition and, you know, getting ahead and acquiring and no, it wasn't for me. So I don't, you can have it. I give Grimner all my capitalism in one bag. You know, there you go. Pew. But here we are in 2018, and we're just now finding out <laughs> that Rockefeller medicine's not what they said it was. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, predat I would call it that, predatory. Rob, I don't know what else to put it as, but it was the highlight of my... Uh, financial endeavors as far as put me in a, in a spot where I was going to actually get somewhere and nah, something happened and I went no this isn't right and I didn't have that opinion when I went in I had that opinion when I learned how to do what they were using me to do you know because that's what I mean predatory they used me to use other people and and when when uh it was at the time when I was finding out about fractional reserve banking and how the Fed worked and all these. I was just bombarded. I was about 27. And just something snapped. And I went, no, 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 no. I'm just not going to do all that. So all the things that I had acquired in the three years uh, time I'm talking about. I had a lot of jobs during it that led up to this one particular job. And I quit that. <laughs> to drive an airport shuttle because <laughs> I wanted to uh I wanted to be free of feeling bad about what I did I wanted to do something that was kind of nice and I thought delivering people on vacation you know they're coming here to San Francisco to visit somebody or they got a week or two off from work or whatever the hell they got they get to the airport and they had these shuttle services that would take them to different neighborhoods you, you whatever neighborhood you're going to you'd wait in this area and you get a shuttle going to that neighborhood so you don't have to drive around the whole city and wait you know you could knock out five or six people in in one trip anyway there was a blue one and there was a green one i don't even remember the names of the services at the time this goes back to 87 i think and i had to get a driver's license I, it was really a nightmare but it was fun and uh, i got to do a lot of stuff driving yeah just thinking and being out there in the world doing something that wasn't um, predatory i was actually in my my little way i thought i was helping people out and one day i've told this story before I get a, a radio call, and the dispatcher tells me to call him on the landline phone. So I do. You got a pocketbook in the back of your truck. And at the last place you went, the woman called and said she thinks she lost it in your truck. So I go, look, there it is. Go back, give it to her. And she gives me a $20 bill for bringing her back her wallet with all her money in it instead of Oh, I don't see it on this truck and taking it and dumping the ID and all that kind of shit because people do that. But I was an honest guy and I did the right thing. And these kind of little stepping stones made me feel good. A little bit better, a little bit better. And eventually I just decided to travel again. Um, I went back to England and after that. Then I went to Mexico for a little bit. And then I ended up in Florida, but the things that I've been able to do were always because I didn't listen to other people's advice. I did uh, what I wanted to do at the moment, and I don't know. I guess Cirque and me are kind of cool because I don't get up and go out of town for three or four days at a time like I once did. <clears throat> I'm more settled down. I guess I'm tired of all the all the hustle and bustle and the rules and the, the searches and the checking. Yeah, is that a kick? I I had the best time doing that, Rob. Mm. And it's like bartending. You know, it's not the best job in the world, but it's a of all the shitty jobs that I ever had, tending a bar was one of the more uh, fun, dirty jobs. I called them dirty jobs because. 
people can be a pain in the balls. Good Lord. I give you a reason. I used to uh, tend the bar at this place in San Francisco. And there was five guys named George that came to this particular bar in this neighborhood. Now, in the neighborhood, there was six bars that the whole group that we all knew each other drank at. But this one bar that I'm speaking of in particular, they got this new electric light. And you could type things in and it would repeat the the code that you sent it. <clears throat> And I made this joke thing about George, 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 and George. And these guys were actually arguing about which George was the first George out of the five Georges. <laughs> because their name was, were, I mean, out of nowhere, the bartender buys this neon light bar box that we could play with. And they come in the bar and they see their name in lights. And, and the next thing it was, I'm the first one. <laughs> So you got five drinking guys arguing about <laughs> who's the first one in a group. <laughs> I I don't know if I explained that properly, but it, it's clear to me what I was talking about. Mm. That's why we do the dork table, because fuck. <laughs> Where else but the dork table would you go? Hey, you want to go vote for Trump? Say, no. Well, me neither. I'm going to go a little spark up a doobie. And that's the <laughs> that's the other side of reality. I wonder if the pot the pot people vote. They might. Can you imagine being sucked into that game and smoking, believing that the system is telling you the truth? How could you? Little things like that. I mean, geez, what haven't we been lied about over the our lifetime? I can't think of anything. I'd like to think of something, but every time I do, I find a link that goes, hey, you know what? This is bullshit, too. <laughs> it doesn't matter what the topic is. Of course, if you can find out that it's not true on the Internet, well, then you can equally find out that it is true. It just depends on uh, what what side of the argument you're looking for usually gets filled, I think. Like, uh, if I suddenly came up with a thing about how wonderful Donald Trump was and Googled it, I'd probably get a bunch of shit about how bad he was. Or, well, I don't know. What, what I'm getting at is whatever I'm looking for, it, it'll be, I get sent what suits me, it seems. You know, whatever tickles my, uh, my interest bone. It seems like the, the Internet's learned how to supply me with what I need to know. <laughs> what I need to know <laughs> because no matter how many of us see that the SCOTUS ruled this that and the other about the cops and the cops don't have any duty and all that horse shit there's still going to be 99 out of 100 people that are going to say nah that's a bunch of bullshit yo you communists you don't know what you're talking about the police are there to protect us from the bad guys and eh, I, I can't see it. I'm, of course, they got two million people in prison to prove that their system works. Because <laughs> I guess, I guess in, in America, numbers matter. You know? The more, more members you got in your group, the better group you have. <laughs> Rab says the rabbit hole is an abyss. I think the rabbit hole is a scam. I don't think there's a deep state. I don't think there. I think it's all the fucking same. You know, it's all bullshit. All of it, everything. Me, you, this collective crap that we think we're doing. And if it wasn't bullshit, then we'd be uh, getting better sources of fuel. I think would be the foundation right there. They wouldn't be shoving this crap down our throat and charging us up the ass to get it. And then the minute you resist them in any way, well, then we'll take away your second rent shit and you can sit there with nothing. You know, they treat us like fucking children. And that maybe that's the difference that I recognize between the uh, the voter 
and the anarchist mind is. The voter is looking for somebody else to enforce the shit they're too weak to do. And the anarchist wants the voter to get the fuck out of the way so shit can get done. There's just not, never going to be enough of us. I think the indoctrination is, it's done its job so well. Mm. It's done its job so well, people support Donald Trump. I mean, good God. How could you not know what a piece of shit this guy is? I mean, well, I guess they said that about Obama, too. I did, and I got told, Oh, you can't say that. You're a racist. Yeah, you want to explain that to my buddy Reggie over here is blacker than Obama, how I'm a racist and how I hate niggers? Because I don't get your point. But, of course, that never went anywhere because you can't really argue with reality. You can just, you can make fun of reality and you can do a lot of stuff. But when two realities collide, nobody wins or loses. They just seem to collide and you end up with two people that end up not conversing with each other because their realities collided. <laughs> it's it's so stupid. It doesn't matter who I'm for or who I'm against, but that vibration and that frequency, it matters, but not on a level that we understand it at. We think we understand it, but outside of getting maybe upset about my opinion about your thing or your opinion about my thing, nah, that th that's not reality to me. Even s circles say, why do you argue with so-and-so? Mm. And I, I've told her, this isn't arguing. This is playing. This is joking around and having a giggle. You know, How can you take this seriously in the first place? It's about politics. It's about people I don't physically engage. So outside of their reach into my privacy, uh, how do I mean privacy, though? They're reaching into my living situation, like the war on drugs. I'm against that. Ooh. Uh, I'm against a lot of things. Well, I'm against things at home that I'm not against here because the way they do it here is different. <laughs> anyway, yeah, they uh, got a, a nephew-in-law, Mickle, and he's been going to school in finance, learning about finance. And the last time he came over for a visit in the summertime, I was chatting with him and I asked him, I said, so what do you plan to do? And he says, well, I'm considering continuing school and getting further at school to get a better job. And I thought, wow, that's pretty cool. And then he's explaining, you know, they send, they give me this much to live on and for books and whatnot. And the whole, you don't go into school, come out of it in debt here. You go to school here and you come out of it with an occupation of some kind or another to put you in the slave market. Now, that's the way I see it. My wife does not like me to call her a slave. That was one of our original agreements. She says, hey, I know how you feel about that, blah, 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 but can you not call me a slave? So, mm, for the most part, I don't. Maybe on the radio, I'll comment about it. But nose to nose, I, I've been pretty good about that. But I still think if I'm selling my time to somebody else doing shit they want me to do under their direction, that, that's not freedom to me. Now, driving the airport shuttle, as confining as you would imagine that could be, there was a lot of freedom in that. I could pick and choose who I picked up. You know, when you're driving in a circle in an airport, uh, you can make it look like you can't stop <laughs> if you know how to drive correctly and bypass that and hope somebody else picks them up before you get back around. <laughs> I did that a time or two. You know, there, to some people just uh, just as well as me, their appearance physically will, at the time in my life, bring a divide. Now, I got over all that in time, but when I was in my 20s, short hair, suits, and all that, I just got out of all that shit. And I was thinking, oh, fuck, I don't want to be around. I don't want to be around those people. I want to go to the Richmond. Let's look for some hippies to take to the Richmond and see the Golden Gate Bridge. <laughs> I don't want to go to the financial district and drop off the, you know, the, the uh, what do you call them, the, the traders. What do, you, what do you call those traders? Brokers. Yeah, the brokers. They got a financial district in every major city. If, if you're not lucky, you'll find it. 
<laughs> Maybe driving an airport shuttle. <laughs> I did it. Hey, well, anyway. But on the bright side, I don't I don't do that anymore. Of course, I haven't had a, a license to legally drive in um since that period. That was the last legal driver's license I held and it I think it was like a two or three year, year license, so it expired in wow. <laughs> forever ago <laughs> then I drove without one but what changed after uh, after I left I think the the state got real bad with their checks and because I didn't endure a lot of that maybe the last six months of being in the states I remember coming back from out of town going to Raleigh or some damn place and uh, they had a, a stop way out it, it was there was a, a farmland between us and the interstate, so you had to drive this kind of desolate road to get to the road to get to the interstate. And the cops had right in the halfway point put up a, a cop car stopping everybody at random, you know, to see if you're wearing your seatbelt and shit like that. And I'm not a seatbelt fan. I think that should be a choice. So anyway, I wasn't driving that night any damn way. But if I had a been, see, this is what I mean about my luck or whatever the fuck um, they call whatever got me through all those years. When I was driving, there was never checks. And I would drive to from Jacksonville to Knoxville. And nothing. Never got stopped. Never got pulled over by nobody. And then uh, somebody else would take the wheel and we'd get stopped at some random fucking checkpoint for looking for, you know, plutonium up your ass or whatever the fuck the excuse was at the time and now i hear it's worse i don't i don't know oh i'm so sad my home two million americans in in prison 25 percent of the world's bad guys are all living in one place america and their head evil doer trump the biggest thief on the planet well He's one of the big, he's one of the bigger uh, bad guys I've ever read about so far. Mm. And for all you voters out there, I think what you really should put some interest in and all that crap with uh, Russia. <laughs> I thought that was a great distraction from. I wonder how much real estate Trump's got invested got investments in in Russia over the years. I don't know if they got casinos in Russia or not, but. I've seen Russian players on the site that I go to. I got a gaming site where I go to to play cards. And there's people from all over the Eastern world, Asia, Japan, Mexico, but no Americans. You can't log on to the, this site if you uh, have an American IP. Go figure. Because the Fed can't figure out how to tax it. So instead of figuring out how to tax it, they just go, well, then you can't have it. We just won't let you use it. We'll make some bullshit law in Congress that's got all the power, by the way. Trump is just, a, he's like the Queen of England, you know. Oh, he has the power of the pen, and he can use the power of the pen. But it ultimately, it really goes to Congress, the Queen of England, where all the power is really held. Because Congress can put Trump down in a heartbeat if they want to. But... The voting public doesn't know diddly shit about their own fucking system. America! Same, th man, it's all the same. It's just, America's got such a, a good side to it that's just been tarnished over the years by these bald-faced, fucking lying, thieving, two-faced cunts that ruin it for everybody. You know, so they get one out of a hundred bad guys in a prison cell, but the other 99 don't belong there. Things that could have been dealt with in other ways but we've chosen as a collective to go the federal way and the feds just well they're they're taking all the fun out of living hey Vinny finally showed up to say hello on the dark table program while they come to the very end ah so that ends another episode of the dork table podcast live from Denmark I uh, better try seven and a half. Anyway, so what do we got coming up? We've got tomorrow. We have Sunday. We've got Grimner in the blues. He plays blues for a while. And sometimes he'll play his blues complete into and during 
the trivia game. And I'm going to be there. I got a great plan for you guys this week. I'm going to come in there with both guns loaded. I'm telling my wife I'm glued to this chair. I'm not getting up. I'm playing trivia. Leave me alone. Huh? Oh, never mind. Her mom's coming over. I can't play trivia. I got other plans. I, I like her family coming over. So, well, when you don't see me on the trivia, it's usually because I got a Sunday family thing going on with my in, my inherited family from Denmark. Hmm. And go figure, these people actually like me. So, mm, I'm not going to fuck this one up. <laughs> anyway, uh, we got trivia. Then... Hal Anthony comes around to give us some do's and don'ts about how to interact with the general public. Uh, I don't think there's anything coming on again until Tuesday. That's me. I had a host- I had a herd of hostages this week on In a Perfect World. I got a little visit from Miss Moose and Grimnir and Rob Works, but Rob was having some technical difficulty. And I ended up having... I'd like to do um, more radio with Grim. Grimner's a good top. Uh, he's a good guy for me to converse with, and and like Rob, he's not as quick to the yak 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 like me. He likes to pick his words and slow down a little bit. So spend a little time talking to the guys to have a slower pace is just a. It's a nice change for me from the Vinny. <laughs> yeah. Right place, right time. I don't know. Uh, oh, yeah. Man, you name it, it's happened in my life. But, uh, yeah, they're putting out the pictures of the girls on the RLM chat. Mm. And then on Wednesday, we got Graham Z comes on Wednesday with her Rocket Chair podcast. Fr- Wednesday and Friday. But she's got her uh, links that she reads to us and lets us know where to stick it and how far to stick it. She is not shy. So if you want some insight into the world around you, <laughs> check out Mary. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Mary. You're 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 one of a kind, to say the least. And then Friday night after Mary, then you've got Grimnir and Moose Girl doing the Freaker's Ball. And I think that's about it till I come back and try this crap next week. So I don't know. I think uh Anarchy is its a good topic, but there's so little to explain to the RLM people, you know, the, the crowd that I feel I got. I'm preaching to the choir, so I was really struggling through this to try to find a, a, a way to explain what I see that doesn't force you to choose a side, you know. And with that, I'm going to Roger Wilco over and out you all. And see you on Tuesday on In a Perfect World with who knows who. I might get a hostage, am I might not.